I really hope I'm right about this. So this is basically a prop, and I've been using it as my computer for the last month or so. And I know what you're thinking. Why do you have a mechanical keyboard with a computer built into it? Why is the aspect ratio so weird? And did you ruin a functional normal computer in order to make that? So let's get into it. So I'm always into trying alternative versions of normal everyday things, and I probably always will be. But a lot of exploratory like alternative form factors that you see publicly available online are renders made by designers or artists that are just brainstorming, not things that you can actually try to use. And I wanted to actually try to use something. I built a cyber deck in the past and I did a video on that, but I never ended up actually using it very much because it didn't run Windows. So this does, and this is kind of a mock-up that is kind of like a prop, but I can actually use it day to day, see how it is. My file design was inspired by the Raspberry Pi keyboard, this Intel concept computer, and of course, Cyberdex. At the start of this project, I first researched mini PCs and also emailed Framework to see if any of their modular motherboards were available. Unfortunately, at the time, they hadn't been released yet. So I just tore apart my gaming laptop, which for $400 on Craigslist was actually the same price as a framework motherboard and has a 1650 Ti. The only thing I had to be careful about is some laptop motherboards won't boot up if they don't have a display attached. So I had to test that out before I committed to the project. I also experimented with driving non-native displays directly off of the motherboard. Unfortunately, I didn't have any success with this, um, but my computer doesn't have a muck switch anyway. So I decided not to fret about the uglier exterior and just accept that I'll get a marginally better gaming performance by using my display out. For the chassis, I used the Onyx wormhole keyboard with the gold pink keys. I love this thing, but let me tell you, it was horrible to disassemble. I 3D printed a base that lifts the whole keyboard up by about a quarter inch, giving me just enough room for the motherboard. Because both the prints and the housing were made out of translucent material, it was a perfect application for this uh, UV curing JB Weld adhesive, which I highly recommend. I removed the CPU fan and replaced them with this little RGB fan. Never cut heat pipes. I very carefully bent the heat pipes up and out of the way so it fit. I also removed the left daughter board and later thermal epoxied on a heat sink right above the CPU socket. I have important stuff on this drive that's not backed up. I'm about to cut it in half, see if it still works. This. It works, it booted, thank God I was right about that. The Wi-Fi card was also too large for the housing, so I made a little clearer thing for it and then routed the antenna to the side externally. And then the other side, to get around the unfortunate external cable, I got this low profile HDMI right angle adapter, and then the uh, power button is external as well. And all this external hardware might look jank, but it gives it like this really kind of harsh, dystopic future type of prop vibe to it, which I really like. This was what I was going for. You might think it looks janky, and it kind of does, but that's kind of the aesthetic, so. Uh, now let's get into the review. How has this been to use? So first of all, while I do like the typewriter aesthetic with just the ultra wide display, and while I did find it was helpful to use this just with that one display when I was trying to just focus on like writing a script or doing something that was kind of productive, um, for the most part, I used this with the um, external monitor mounted up top. So I 3D printed brackets into the chassis design that holds the monitor exactly at the right angle for when I'm sitting at a desk, and I found the dual monitor solution really helpful. It honestly makes me want to buy a ZenBook Duo just because I found so many use cases where I was using that lower display, although the ergonomics of this you know, when stationary, even better than the ZenBook because the display, the main display is a little bit higher and closer to eye level. Regarding the dual displays though, I did notice that some games would let you mouse from the game to the lower window, while others required you to window the game to move your mouse to the other display. And I did try both windowed and full screen modes for this. Some games just didn't play nice with multiple monitors and that's more of a Windows issue. And overall, so long as I was using it at a desk, having this large of real estate um, and this nice of input devices for such a small footprint was nice. And while battery life was unchanged, the lack of a trackpad really makes this a desktop device. Doesn't work well on the lap. Although if you're able to wirelessly connect it to a TV, that, that could be kind of cool, using it like on the couch with the main display being the TV. So that kind of summarizes it. It lost a bunch of the convenience of a laptop, but gained a bunch of the really nice quality input devices of a desktop computer. So it falls somewhere in the middle. 
And I've enjoyed using it enough that it almost makes me want to try this again, but with Mac Mini hardware. So that's all for this video. Comment, like, all that stuff for the YouTube algorithm, and have a great day.